Good afternoon, everyone. Let me first of all apologize for the weather. This was originally scheduled to be outside, uh, but this morning it was raining when I came to work, and I knew if we left it outside, it would be raining at 5 o'clock this afternoon. As it turned out, uh, it's not that bad. And in fact, when we finish the uh, ceremony here, we'll do the ribbon cutting, and then we're going to move outside, and unless it's raining, uh, and remove that tent and have the uh, official unveiling uh, of the statue. So again, thank you for your patience. Uh, more important, thank you for being here. Welcome, all of you, on this historic occasion. Faculty, students, staff, friends, and special guests. Welcome to this ribbon cutting and dedication ceremony for the Rosen Carter Health and Human Sciences Complex. Among our special guests today, and there are many, in fact, I would argue all of you are special, but Perhaps the most special among special are uh, the Carter family. We're happy to have here today President Jimmy Carter. It's always an honor to have him on our campus and to be reminded once again that uh, he is one of our alums. We also have many other members of the Carter family here today, and I am not going to recognize them individually. Uh, I have asked uh, Mrs. Carter to do that in her comments. I am afraid if I tried, I would mess up and my wife would never let me forget it. <laughs> uh, we're also privileged to have four members of the Board of Regents in attendance today. Four. And I, I guess uh, Regent Walker, I think, is on his way if he's not here yet. But uh, having four Regents in an occasion like this in itself makes it special. Regent and Board Chair Dink Neesmith. Regent Doreen Poitivit and her husband Alec, Regent Larry Walker, who if he's not here yet, uh, apparently will be here, and then finally, former state senator and Regent George Hooks and his wife Kay. University System, uh, University System of Georgia Chancellor Hank Huckabee and his wife Amy are with us today. Uh, other guests include GSW Foundation Chair, Mr. Jimmy Skipper, State Representative Mike Chokas, America's Mayor, Barry Blunt, Allstate CEO, Mr. Bill Weldon, 2WR Architect, Mr. Scott Allen, System Vice Chancellor Jim James, and two other members of the Systems Facility Team, Michael Miller and Lee Kane, are there in the back. The artist responsible for the creation of the bronze statue, soon to be unveiled, Ms. Tina Stern and Mr. Donald Haugen. And again, one of our most generous donors, Foundation Board Member, Ms. Betty Pope, Dr. Lisa Eason, Executive Director of the Rosen Carter Institute, RCI Co-Chair, Ms. Kathy Cade and other members of the RCI Board, Dr. Charles Huffman, Chair and other members of the Psychology and Sociology Department. Also, I'd like to recognize Mr. Dan Lee, who has played a major role in managing this project. And finally, my wife, Dr. Connie Blanchard. So again, welcome to all of you. And if I fail to mention you, Believe me, it is an oversight on my part. We appreciate everyone's being here. Today's ceremony is technically a combination of three important rituals. One, the ribbon cutting for phase two. Two, the official opening of the entire complex. And three, the unveiling of the Rosen Carter statue, which will symbolize the historic naming of this new facility. Today we put the final touch on what is probably the most spectacular building project ever completed on this campus. Clearly this event is one of the great moments in the history of Georgia Southwestern. <coughs> These two buildings have changed the look of the campus, given new energy and meaning to our mission, and ensured that the state, the nation, and the world will never forget that Rosen Carter is one of ours. The project has been a long time in the making, as all of you know, and so there are many, many people to thank, faculty, staff, two former presidents, the Board of Regents, the Chancellor and his staff, particularly the facilities staff, our elected officials, our foundation members, other donors to the Rosen Carter Project, Phoebe Putney Health System, and more. More importantly, we thank the Carters, in particular Mrs. Rosen Carter, for giving us permission to name this facility in her honor and thereby link the legacy of Georgia Southwestern with the legacy of one of America's most amazing First Ladies. Again, we thank you.
At this time, I'm going to ask our special speakers to come to the podium without individual uh, introductions uh, in the order that their names appear on the program and to kick things off, Chair of the Board of Regents, Mr. Dick Neesman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon. I bring greetings from your University System of Georgia. As Chairman of the Board of Regents, I commend you for helping us achieve our mission to create a more educated Georgia. And President Blanchard, we can all be proud of what's happening at your institution. Today is another example of the important role this institution plays in the lives of 10 million Georgians. There's a saying behind every good man, there's a woman. I believe we all agree Jimmy Carter is a very good man. <laughs> I believe we all would agree that Rosalind Carter has always supported her husband. But this great lady is not just behind President Carter. She's always been by his side and taking the lead and often taking the lead in doing what is right and good. Rosalind Carter creating a more caring society. It says it right here on, on the wall. There are lots of smiles in this room right now, but none is bigger than President Jimmy Carter's smile. Just look at him smiling over there. He, like us, is proud of her leadership helping to improve our nation's health care. This magnificent new facility bears Rosalind Carter's name. What a fitting tribute to a great lady. When we're all gone, the Rosalind Carter Health and Human Sciences Complex will be here as a testament to a wonderful Georgian who made our lives better. And to you, Ms. Carter, we express our love and appreciation. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. It's certainly an honor and a joy to be back once again. Uh, seemed like about a year ago I was here. Uh, we're opening phase one. Uh, and it's great to be here to see the culmination of this great project. As our chancellor, our chairman of the board said, uh, this facility will be a hallmark for the life of Rosalind Carter for years to come. It is indeed an exciting day. But what is most exciting is not the facility. What's most exciting to me is what's going to happen in this facility in the years ahead. It's going to make an impact on this community, on this section of the state, in all of Georgia. And the work that will be done here is something that we will be proud of for years and decades ahead. That will be the true testament to this school, the true testament to Rosalind Carter, and that should excite all of us. It's delight, a delight for me to be here on behalf of the staff of the University System of Georgia to congratulate you on this moment, uh, to congratulate you on this achievement. Uh, but. To, what I'm going to be excited about, what I want to return time and time again to this campus and to meet with the staff and the president of this institution is for them to share with me the stories of the great work that's going to be accomplished here and the impact that through this facility, through this institution, that we will make on the state of Georgia. Thank you for being here. All of those in this room who have had a part in this, thank you forever. We're in your debt. Have a great day. President Ms. Carter, lifelong friends and neighbors from Sumter County, President Ms. Blanchard, Chairman Neesmith, Chancellor Huckabee, Regent Portavant, who represents this congressional district, and her friend, my husband, uh, her husband uh, Alec Portavant from down at Bainbridge, and Regent Walker, who has made it in, and Janice, and glad to see both of y'all, our neighbors from over in Houston County. Kendall, you ready to get them a chair? <laughs> I'm teasing. He doesn't need it. I gave him directions. Maybe he has sidestepped some way. <laughs> you know, we place names on roads and bridges and buildings as a tangible record for intangible service. 
from the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel, 7th chapter, we find the first recorded record of actually memorials. And from that we get our cemeteries and we get our tombstone and we get from that Old Testament chapter the reason we name buildings to honor people. Samuel was a judge and Samuel was a priest and he placed a large stone near the little town of Mizpah and he named it Ebenezer. It's the first word in the second stanza of one of our famous Christian hymns. He called it the stone of help and it remained for generations for the children of Israel to notice that, the stone of help. Today we name buildings and roads and bridges for people that were helpful. From this Old Testament lesson, we have buildings all over the world. This building will always honor a name for giving help and continue to be our stone of hope for generations and generations to come. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you and God bless America. Good afternoon. Um, the last time I was here and I spoke, I said that uh, Mrs. Carter is my hero. And I've said that on many occasions. But I really haven't explained why Mrs. Carter is my hero. It's obvious that the important work that she does and the issues that she champions, mental health and caregiving, is better today because of the awareness and honesty that you bring to those issues. But the way for me, the why for me, is much more personal. I'm the primary caregiver for my mother and by the way, I saw her last night. She sends her love. Um, I sat with her, and we talked, and we talked about today's events. Um, her mobility is somewhat challenged today, so she stays at home except for trips uh, to the doctor and the beauty parlor. Uh, my mother and I were the primary caregivers for my father, who died 12 years ago. And the other half of the story deals with mental health. My mother has had mental health issues since the 60s. And uh, with proper, proper care and therapy, she's been able to manage and uh, do well throughout her life. And she's an accomplished artist and uh, stays active even today, drawing and painting. So you see, that's the why. That's the why that uh, you have touched my life in such a personal way. We've all heard and said so many times that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, personally, I think it takes a family to provide care. A family either by blood or love, but yes, a family. We've all heard the testimonials from the award winners from the Rosalind Carter Awards for Caregiving. And they have one common theme, and that is that the caregivers are either family members or they become family members through the love and care that they provide. Mrs. Carter, I want to thank you for your service to mankind and I want to congratulate you because this is truly an honor well deserved. Thank you. Good afternoon. Somebody said after hooks and, cho and chokers speak, there's not much left to be said. So, <laughs> but it is a privilege for me to be here today and to take, play, take part in this event uh, to honor Ms. Carter and to thank her for all she's done, not only for this community and this state, but this nation and things around the world. You know, Senator Toots was talking about cemeteries and, and headstones and all. You know, on a headstone, it has a person's birthday and the, and the date they died, and there's normally a dash in between that. And that's the person's life between those dashes. And that's what makes a person, their life, uh, what it is, what they do during the course of their life. And we're dedicating a building today and, and a, and a uh, statue that symbolizes what Ms. Carter has done during the course of her life. 
and this this building and and all that's here will remain as a testimony after she's gone of what she's done during the course of her life and i think it's an ex excellent example for someone to follow who's cared about uh people who have uh, fallen on hard times, people who have me mental illnesses, people who have uh, Alzheimer's, and teaching people how to uh, take care of those that, that need to be taken care of. And so, Ms. Carter, I congratulate you on, on today. Uh, this is going to be uh, something that will serve not only this community, but also Southwest Georgia. It's going to provide educational opportunities for a lot of young people, and will also provide opportunities for people to learn how to to uh, learn caregiving skills to care for those who can't care for themselves. And again, congratulations and thank you for allowing me to be here today. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mr. President, Ms. Carter. Certainly a pleasure to be here again. The last time the podium was right around the corner, right? <laughs> good to see you too, Regent Walker. Um, I'm representing uh, and, and, and speaking today on behalf of the uh, GSW Foundation Board of Trustees, and it's my pleasure to be, bring you greetings from, from our board. Uh, we work very hard and very closely with the uh, uh, Georgia Southwestern uh, faculty and administration to try to make this campus uh, a better place for the students to provide funds for them to, to continue their education and that sort of thing. Uh, but as I'm, I'm thinking today about um, uh, this particular event, I, I really think today uh, the theme ought to be making a difference. And Mrs. Carter, you have really made a difference. This building, and, 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 and Hank mentioned it a while ago, but this building, the building across the way, um, the teachers, the educators that will be teaching here, and more importantly, the students that will be learning here will take what they are taught and what they learn in the area of health care, in the area of caring for others, not only throughout this community or throughout this area of the state, but they'll take that literally all over the world. And that is the definition, in my humble opinion, of making a difference. And I think it's important for us, each of us, rather than to say, well, gee, somebody else ought to do that. Somebody else ought to figure out something, to, how to fix that, to follow Mrs. Carter's example in deciding to do something about the issues that face us as a community, as a state, as a nation, and as a world. That's the only way the only way that I think that we're going to be successful. And every person here, every person here has something to contribute. Like Mrs. Carter has contributed immensely, President Carter has contributed immensely, and at the end of the day, we all can contribute immensely to the betterment of our world to making a difference. And Mrs. Carter, I congratulate you on this recognition of your making a difference in our world. Thank you. Th thank you for, for being here today and thank you for helping others who are less fortunate than ourselves. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Blanchard and uh, you guys at Board of Regents, uh, let me, on behalf of uh, Will Sumner, our project manager for this particular project and our staff who worked here on these two jobs, uh, Thank you for choosing Allstate Construction to uh, work with your team and uh, put the bricks and sticks together on these two beautiful buildings uh, that's going to not only impact and, and offer more opportunities for the students passing through here for years to come, but, uh, but most importantly, uh, Ms. Carter, to uh, build your home for your, your mission, your organization. Uh, I have learned through my life that uh, Living truly is much more than, than work. It's uh, it's touching other people when you can, improving their lives. And uh, I join this, uh, these other speakers in, uh, in thanking you for your impact on this community, for those who are most vulnerable in our in this area, and uh, for making their lives better. So thank you again for this opportunity, and uh, wish you great success. Thank you.
Good afternoon, and uh, on behalf of my partners and our staff, we want to say thank you, Board of Regents. Thank you, Georgia Southwestern. Thank you, Mrs. Carter. Uh, this is truly an honor to be involved in this project. You know, oftentimes I get asked, well, what types of projects do you like to work on? And I say, well, I like many of them, but I truly enjoy working on projects in the healthcare and helping environment. And whether it's a 400,000 square foot addition to a hospital or in an academic setting such as this, the most important thing is that we're touching lives, not just today, but for in the future. And I think about the last time we were here and the students were sitting on the stair over there and how excited they were uh, to be part of this and, um, and how they're off in the community now and they're, 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 they're doing their mission and they're impacting lives in a positive manner. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to be involved with. I'm going to say thank you. So. Hello, I'm Lisa Esom. I'm the executive director of the Rosalind Carter Institute for Caregiving. You know, it's amazing to think that in the upcoming years, one in every five individuals in the United States will be over the age of 65. And across the lifespan, and including the thousands of our service members who are returning from deployment, we are seeing more disabilities and chronic illnesses facing our nation. Who cares for these individuals? It's caregivers. Caregiving is not a role that you prepare for. It's not a role that you rehearse and get ready for. Usually that role is thrust upon you and you simply do your best. Years of research show us that caregiving costs the caregiver. Caregivers are so busy caring for their loved one that they neglect their own health. They experience depression and burnout due to giving this care. They give so selflessly. They do so willingly. I am thankful for the vision of Mrs. Carter to see the need to support caregivers, both formal and family caregivers. At the Rosalind Carter Institute, that's what we focus on, sustaining those caregivers in their valuable role. I am thankful for the leadership of Dr. Blanchard here at Georgia Southwestern State University, the leadership of the Board of Regents, with Chancellor Huckabee and all the regents who came today in support of this, Representative Chokas and Mr. Skipper of the Georgia Southwestern Foundation for our much needed new facility. And I thank the Rosalind Carter Institute Advisory Board members, many of you who could join us today. Thank you. The Rosalind Carter Institute began in 1987 with a staff of one, with one office space. Today we have 10. And at our previous building, we were doubling up in all of our offices. We even had one person in the kitchen with an office, and she's sitting out there. I know she's glad. <laughs> so thank you for this much needed space. I also want to recognize and thank Carrie Post, who has volunteered her time and her library knowledge to modernize and, cat and catalog our library resources which are available to the public and we welcome everyone to come in and make use of them. So please do. This is truly an exciting time um, and I thank you all for being here. We are going to have tours in our new building immediately following this ceremony. So please join us, walk across the, the medium there and join us and we'll take you a tour through our new facility. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the Department of Psychology and Sociology, I am honored to be here today. As I think about the things that are already happening in these buildings and the changed lives that will flow from here in the future, I am reminded that this place is more than buildings, more than steel and brick and mortar. This place was named for a special woman a woman who has used her voice to lift up the less fortunate. A woman who has given freely of her time and energy to support caregiving and mental health, health issues and bring them to the forefront of the public consciousness. And so this place will reflect more than a name. It will reflect a spirit, the spirit of Rosalind Carter, a spirit that embodies everything that is good about being human. We are gathered here to honor you, 
but it is really you who honor us. So Mrs. Carter, with the deepest appreciation, thank you for allowing us to be touched by your spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the woman of the hour, Mrs. Rosen Carter. Am I supposed to make a speech? <laughs> Thank you. All of you for your remarks. Uh, I'm honored by this recognition and overwhelmed by the attention. I think this is the best dedication ceremony I ever went to. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall, thank you. Chancellor Huckabee, Chairman Neesmith, and the other regents who are here. Thank you for making this day possible. Um, I remember appearing before the board to get these two buildings on the list. Never did I dream that they would bear my name. <coughs> In fact, along the way, I've had several things that happened to me that I never dreamed of. <laughs> but today is special because it reflects back to my mental health work, which has been a lifetime avocation. When we came home from the White House, um, the university had a small endowment for a mental health program, and they wanted me to help establish one. But by the time I was able, I felt I was able to work with them, I already had a good program at the Carter Center in Atlanta, and I didn't want to duplicate that. So we began working with those caring for loved ones with mental illness. It quickly spread to include all caregivers, including frail elderly, uh, physically handicapped. We've done a lot with uh, those caring for loved ones with Alzheimer's. And we also care for, work with the professionals that care for those with these um, problems. Well, that was the beginning of the Roslyn Carter Institute. But first, I've been reminiscing about my school days here. I rode a trailway bus to, from planes back and forth every day. Um, a friend picked me up at the bus station and brought, we came to the college together. Uh, in the afternoons, I had to walk back to the bus station. It's a pretty far piece. Sometimes I caught, um, hitched a rod. <laughs> um, my allowance for the week was $4, and I learned that if I skipped lunch one day, I could go to a movie. And I remember my professor letting me off during the last week of school, during test week, so I could spend June week at the Naval Academy with Jimmy. He had asked me to marry him, and I had said, said yes, the second time he asked me. <laughs> One of the first things we did with the Institute was a survey of the community using students to collect the data. We were trying to find out how many caregivers there were in the community. And we were surprised, I would say shocked, at how many the students found lonely, isolated, suffering, suffering from depression, not knowing where to turn. We quickly realized we had struck on an issue of major importance. So we went to work. And over the years, we've developed effective programs that can lessen depression so prevalent among caregivers, decrease the burden, and improve the quality of life for those providing the care and for those receiving the care. We didn't think about it at the time, but in looking for a way to focus on mental health, for which the endowment was uh, meant, we happened upon a related issue that would draw national and international attention to the university. Today, Georgia Southwestern and RCI have gained stature, becoming known as pioneers in the field of one of the most important issues of the day. 
I'm proud of what has been accomplished. I'm proud of my staff and the advisory board. Most of them are here today, all the staff, I suppose. But we couldn't have done it without the full cooperation of the university and the Board of Regents, who have been cooperative and supportive all the way. Thank you. I'm deeply grateful to you. I especially want to thank Kendall. It was his idea for naming the building and for the statue, which I protested, <laughs> but the Regents supported. <laughs> well, I thank all of my friends here. I see many who contributed to make our work possible, many who have supported me over the years, even when times were tough and didn't go the way we wanted them to. I'm grateful to all of you. And my family, who sometimes during my efforts may have felt neglected, I love you all, and thank you for your understanding. And I meant to introduce you in the beginning, but since I didn't, I'm gonna introduce you now. <laughs> <laughs> Chip and Becky are here. Stand up. Chip, uh, these three of our, our children are here. Uh, Jeff and Annette. Amy and Jay. And you saw Hugo and Errol go out the door. <laughs> and Jimmy, who has always supported me, encouraged me even pushed me to do things I didn't think I could do. Thank you, Jimmy. He never, I see, I see my sister Alethea here. Stand up, Alethea. Jimmy never likes for me to be away, but he even puts up with it when he knows it's important to me. Well, I have one other person of our family that I want to introduce, and that's Mary. Mary Prince. <laughs> well, my hope and expectation is that Georgia Southwestern and the Rosalind Carter Institute will continue to expand their beneficial impact through future years to come. Thank you very much. We'll move out there and we'll have the official unveiling uh, and dedication. So again, thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks for your support. And again, thanks for sharing this great day.
good. Hey, how do we go? <laughs> Again, uh, let me, uh, if I could have your attention, uh, I want to say once again how grateful I am to all of you for sharing with us this amazing day. Uh, I am in my seventh year here, and I've got to tell you, uh, I can't remember a more exciting day uh, here at Georgia Southwestern than today. Uh, so special, so many things, and I think uh, years from now, we'll look back at this event and see this as a major milestone in the evolution of Georgia Southwestern State University. So again, thanks to all of you uh, for what you do. Thanks for all your support, financial and otherwise. Uh, without it, well, we would not be where we are. We don't have a program tonight, but uh, I do want to thank uh, one group in particular. And that is the group that planned and put together uh, the dinner and the reception this evening. A uh, committee that was chaired, first of all, by my wife, who, even though she does not get paid, works full time on behalf of the university. Uh, and Amber DeBase and Shane Collins and uh, Jennifer Slinker. Uh, Arthur Clark, most of you who've been around here very long uh, know about Arthur. He is the get it done person. Uh, my executive assistant, Paula Williams. Uh, just some great people that I work with here who make these kind of things happen. So again, thanks to you. And again, thanks to all of you who are here tonight. There is not a uh, particular program. I talked to 
uh, President Jimmy Carter some time back, and I said, look, we don't have a program, but I sure would love to have you or other members of the family talk about Rose and Carter. I mean, this is her day. As I said earlier, she is the woman of the hour. Uh, what happened today is really all about her. Uh, again, her impact on this institution will last forever, and we will be forever grateful. So. Uh, the President has agreed to uh, make, tell you some stories perhaps, uh, but uh, talk about Rosalind. But again, thanks to all of you and, and thanks to the Carters for their allowing us to use Rosalind's name. Uh, as I say, this is it's a great day and I'm excited about it and I am so pleased that I've had the opportunity to get to know the most amazing people that I have ever met. So at this point, uh, without any uh, further comment, I'm going to introduce a man who needs no introduction, President Jimmy Carter. Thank you very much. Well, when Kendall asked me to do this, I had mixed emotions about it. I've been uh, governor of Georgia. I've been president of the United States. I've never had a building name for me. <laughs> so I talked it over with Rose, and I asked her to give me some talking points for the night. <laughs> She gave me one of those frosty looks that I've been accustomed to since we got married. <laughs> but then I thought about uh, the fact that I'm probably married to one of the most remarkable and exciting women in the world. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Rosalind and her campaigning every day, she spent 75 days in Florida. She visited 105 towns and cities in Iowa. I never would have been in the White House. And um, I'll just mention a few other things where she's excelled. Uh, she's a famous author, as you know. When we got out of the White House, we both turned our attention to writing books. I wrote a remarkable book called Keeping Faith. She wrote a book uh, <laughs> called First Lady from Plains. And when the reviews came out, uh, my book was number three on the New York Times bestseller. I went in to tell Rosen about it, and she had placed a New York Times page on the wall of her, of her office where her book was number one. <laughs> You remember that, Rosa, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Rosa started skiing when she was 59 years old. And she uh, was an avid skier. She, after about 10 years, she fell down and broke her collarbone. And then the next year, she was back on the ski slopes. So she's pretty well determined to do something when she makes her mind to it. We both are fly fishers. We go to Pennsylvania every year. We've been up there 33 years in a row. And we'll be going next, this month, later this month, to fish in the same place. Rosen, I remember, with a fly called a Trichorithodes, which is about the size of a mosquito, she caught 23 trout in one pool, <laughs> which set a record for Spruce Creek, where we fish. And then later, she and I went to fish for Atlantic salmon. This was a, an excursion uh, organized by uh, ABC. It was called American Sportsman. You may remember having seen it. So we both were taken and all our expenses paid up to Canada. So the first day, Rosen hooked a 25-pound Atlantic salmon. The, Governor of 
of uh, Quebec province had given us fly rods, and Rosen's fly rod broke half in two, where the reel fixed, and the reel fell in the bottom of the boat, and Rosen picked the reel up off the bottom of the boat, and continued to catch the trout, and finally landed a 25-pound <laughs> Atlantic salmon. <laughs> the TV cameras were not there for Rosalind. The TV cameras were there for me. I didn't catch it. <laughs> I didn't catch anything <laughs> for, the, for the first four days. Finally, the, the final day, I, I was fishing with a very famous, uh, famous guy, and, and he counted my cast. And uh, he said that I, that I cast 13,000 times before I finally caught hung my first fish. <laughs> so Rosalind has taught me how to fish. She's a bird watcher. Rosen has sighted and identified over 1,300 species of birds. I'm sorry? She, she is modest also. Uh, she said she had them identified. Well, we, we bird watch together, and, and we go with an experienced ornithologist or bird watcher, and he identifies the birds, but we have to see them and make sure we see them before we count them. So we just passed 1,314 birds, and everywhere we go, we, we go bird watching. Uh, I would say the most important thing is that Rosen has become the uh, number one champion in the world of the people who suffer from me mental illness, and that makes me very proud. We've had the Carter Center going now for more than 30 years, and I've told many audiences even when it wasn't Rosen's special day, that if the Carter Center hadn't done anything except just have Rosen Carter's mental health program, it would all have been worthwhile. So she's made me proud in a lot of ways. And I would say, I've said that she was both uh, amazing and uh, surprising. And the surprising thing is that she has, uh, for the last 67 years, has contrived to make me love her more every year. <laughs> now my son Chip's going to correct my mistakes. I gotta follow that. <laughs> my father is my mother's full partner. And being raised by the two of them and trying to emulate the closeness and the camaraderie that they have shared with each other in my own marriage has made me much more of a complete human being. You know, the last time I spoke at Georgia Southwestern College, was the final speech of the second time I had taken speech one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> and I failed it for the second time. <laughs> they told me I had five minutes to think and explain my mother. And I tried to come up with a central idea or concept that controlled her life. And I decided that she truly, passionately cares about other people. When Dad got elected president, we moved into the White House. She had a young daughter she had to raise. Our family was buffeted from outside. They wrote about everything we did. My mother got us together. We came out of that experience of four years in the White House, a much, much closer family than we went into there because of my mother and because she gave so much of her time to all of us. I've traveled in Africa with her and seen her compassion and caring for the poorest of the poor in the poorest countries on earth. She's literally been to the ends of the earth to help those folks. 
and she does it with a smile and she gives freely of her time. Everybody in the family and everybody that knows my parents would always say that my mother is the best politician in the family. <laughs> and it's because she cared so much about the people that she met. She listened to them. She understood them. And she became their advocate, not only behind the scenes, but in public. She's given a lifetime to the mentally ill and to trying to better their status, to fight stigma. And now caregivers, I mean, wow, she cares and she has caregivers. It's wonderful what she's done. You know, she has a way of, of finding out people's talents. When, when she was first lady of Georgia, I got engaged to be married for the first time. And I spent weeks trying to figure out a unique gift that I could give my bride-to-be. I went to Macon, Georgia looking. I went to Columbus and looked. And finally, I spent a weekend in Atlanta where mom was in the governor's mansion. And I picked out the perfect gift that I brought back to Plains. I was so excited. It was an 18-inch tall replica of Picasso's pregnant goat. <laughs> And I was so proud of this gift. I loved the way it looked. I knew that it was unique. I knew that nobody else in Plains, Georgia had one. <laughs> it was great. So I called my mother and I was bragging about this gift. I'd finally found this perfect gift. And she was really excited about it too. And about a week later she called and said she was coming down to Plains for the weekend and she wanted to go buy something for Karen for our wedding. Would I go to Albany shopping with her? And I said, sure. So she came down on Saturday. We went to Albany, went to four or five places, and we looked at outfits, and we looked at purses. And we ended up buying, I think, the most beautiful necklace I've ever seen for mom to give my bride-to-be. She left on Sunday afternoon, went back to Atlanta, and I was in Plains, and Wandering around the house that day, I found her necklace, beautifully wrapped around the neck of Picasso's pregnant goat. <laughs> she has a talent for finding people's gifts and enhancing them. And I think that she's done that with all of you. The people that she meets, she knows, she cares, she understands, and she tries very, very hard to make a big difference in your life. The Rosalind Carter Institute, caregiving. It's my brother beautifully wrapping another necklace around the goat's neck. So let me say, in finishing, thank you, Mom, for being the best mother, the best confidant, the best mentor, and the best friend that a son could ever want. I love you. I'm her youngest son and I don't speak. But three minutes ago, she just became a great grandmother again.
I don't think there's anything more I can say. I'm just so grateful to everybody who's here, to everybody who, um, with whom I have worked, um, and with whom I have become friends, who have helped the Rosalind Carter Institute and Georgia Southwestern. I'm deeply grateful to all of you, and I just think that I can't say anything more. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I'm open. Well, folks, if you're like me, this is a day you will never forget. So again, thank you to all of you, but in particular to the Carters and to Rosen. What a day in the history of the life of this institution. And again, thanks to all of you for being here. It's been a great evening. We look forward to seeing all of you again. And don't forget, Georgia Southwestern, the number one institution in the state of Georgia. Right, Chancellor? <laughs>